Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the one true God. And Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. And I want to send double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And I want to send salutations to all the Akim throughout the four corners of the earth, exalting the name of Yahweh and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, in truth and in sincerity. All right, I want to talk about how God predestinated and chose the righteous and the wicked from the beginning. All right, because yes, the Bible does talk about predestination and the Lord has chosen his his righteous from the beginning and also the wicked. All right. Like, um, for instance, yes, the Lord created a nation of people, an entire nation of people to be wicked and also that same nation to not have any chance of salvation. Like they could not do anything to save themselves at all. And that nation is Esau, Edom. All right. Edom in Hebrew is Adawam, which means red. They are the red people of the planet. They have no pigmentation. When they're in the sun, they turn red. When they get sad or they laugh too hard, they turn red. They have no pigmentation. The only nation on the planet with no pigmentation. All right. Esau means wasted away. What is wasted away? His pigmentation. He has none. All right. He is the curse of the earth. All right. He is cursed. All right. So there's a whole nation of people who have no chance of salvation and it was predestinated to be that way. And it was also predestinated that the Lord would have a righteous election a righteous chosen nation, which is the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, all right, which can which consists of you so-called Latino, Native Americans, and Negroes. You are the chosen nation, all right? So yes, predestination does exist in the Bible, all right? So with that, I'm going to go ahead and grab your scriptures, and I'll jump into it, all right? Now, this is uh Romans 29 and uh I'm sorry 28. It says and we and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. All right? Now it says verse 29 for for whom he did for no he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And now you look at the word predestinate. Go back to the Greek. Uh, Proor idezo. All right. It says uh, to predestine, uh, to pre predetermine, decide beforehand, all right? Uh, in the New Testament, God uh, dis discerning from eternity, all right? All right? So basically, it's to, uh, to make a decision beforehand, and God did that, all right? All right, it was appointed beforehand, all right? to be confirmed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. All right. Verse, verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called and whom he called them. He also justified and whom he justified them, he also glorified. All right. Now, the Lord was of the firstborn and it was predestinated all right and when you read titus the first chapter titus one and i'm gonna start at one 
It says, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. It says, in hope in, in, in eternal life with God that cannot lie, promised before the world began. So it was promised before the world began, before the, the world was created. God promised this, all right? And it said, when you read the first verse, it says, a Paul, a servant of God, and an apostle of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, according to the faith of God's elect. There goes that word elect, meaning the chosen. All right, to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness and hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So his elect will know these secrets. They will know that they were predestined um, to be chosen. All right. Like they like the elect can never lose faith. All right, because it was predestined that they would be the elect. All right. And all of this, Yahweh Shai was brought here before the world was even formed. All right. He was of the firstborn. All right. So that was predestinated. All right. Before anything was even created, the Lord made a decision. Before he even made anything, he thought of it first. Yahweh did. All right. And then he made his son and then his son and the elect, the angels created the earth. All right. I got to go to that. Prove that. This is Genesis one and one. It says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All right. And you look up this word, God. It's uh, Allah Hayyam. All right. And it means rulers, judges, divine ones, angels, gods. So this is not actually talking about the supreme, most high Yahweh. It's talking about the gods, the elect, the Allahayim. All right. That's who that's who in the beginning created the heavens and the earth. All right. That's why he said, uh, shall we make man in our image? That's the the angels. All right. So there you have it. So when we go to this, go to Ephesians 1 and 5, it says, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Hamashiach Yahweh Shai to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. All right. So this was predestinated that we would be adopted back. That's what adoption means to come back. Because in order for you to come back from something, you have first have to have had it. So the elect and the and the Israelites had had um the promise and everything and but they rebelled and they uh the Lord um brought us through slavery and things of that nature and he gave us a chance to be brought back through Yahweh Shai. All right. All right, because we forsook the covenant, we did everything wrong. And the Lord considered us not even a nation. He considered us Gentiles. All right. Those who, who are the Gentile uh, foreigners. All right. The Israelite foreigners, I should say. All right. Verse uh, six, it says, in the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us, made us uh, accept, accepted in the beloved. All right. So that was all predestinated. All right. So now we're going to go to Romans 9. Romans 9. We're going to start at 1. Salakia. Romans 9 and 1. It says, And I say the truth in Hamashiach, I lie not. My conscience also beareth me witness in the Holy, Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, this is Paul speaking, who are Israelites, to whom pertains the adoption, which is what we just read, which was predestinated, 
and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises that's all for Israel. That was predestinated, not for everybody, only for Israel. All right. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came. Who is over all God bless forever. Amen. That's for Israel. All right. That's for Israel. All right. And Israel only. All right. That adoption. All right. And we jump down. Cause this, hey, this whole, this whole chapter is just full of meat, but I'm just going to hit the key points. Go to verse 11. It says for the children being not yet born, neither have done any good or evil that the purpose of God, according to election might stand, may, might stand not of works, but of but of him that calleth. So we read that earlier, man. It's about the election of him that calleth. He, he has to call. He called according to predestination. All right. No, I ain't got it. Oh, uh, let me see. Yeah, right here. Verse 30. In, uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, Romans uh, 8, and 30, 8 and 30, it says, Moreover, whom he had predestined, predestinate uh, them, he also called. And whom he called them, he also justified. And whom he just justified them, he also glorified. All right? So this is for those who are predestinated, man. And it says, verse 12, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, which goes back to Jacob and Esau. As it is written, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. All right. <laughs> hey, and, and also in this chapter, it talks about a vessel made to honor and one to dishonor. All right. Matter of fact, I'm reading first verse 20. It says, nay, but O man, who art thou? That uh, replies against God. Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the powder power hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? That's a question. You can't say nothing. He made Esau wicked, he made Jacob the righteous. It's that simple, and it was all predestinated. All right? Just wanted to keep that short and simple. So with that, all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom.